Hey there, welcome back to the series on taking your OBS to the next level and avoiding these common mistakes. This is part two of the series, and this is one where we're going to take a look at changing the audio settings, which is really important in OBS, from taking it from the simple mode to the advanced mode, and we'll cover how to do that and some settings to change to optimize your audio settings. The next mistake within OBS you want to avoid as well is making sure if you're brand new and you set up your OBS that you have your advanced settings set for your system settings. So I'm going to show you that here in the video on how to change that and where to look for it. So when you're in OBS Studio, you want to go down to settings. Down the bottom here, you'll have all these settings here. You can click settings. You want to head over to the output section on the settings tab on the left here. If you've just installed OBS or if you've never seen these settings, you're going to notice it's going to be set to simple. Now. This is the default settings that it comes out when you install it. You'll have these default settings probably set at 2,500 for your bit rate. And that's your streaming settings there, as well as your audio bit rate, which is 160, which is if you're doing video recording. That's the, the lower side of audio quality bit rate. But for streaming, that's what you probably need because most streaming platforms don't support higher audio bit rates. But you'll have a few other options here. It's just a simplified version of your audio output settings. The mistake that people make if they're trying to do video recording they usually have this set left at default. Most people don't realize when it's just left set like this under the actual video recording, they were probably wondering why their videos aren't recording at a very high bit rate. And it's because the default here, if you don't change this and you leave it as simple, is the recording quality is set to stream. And what that means is it's using this bit rate here. So a lot of people think that, oh, that's my streaming bit rate. So I'll just leave it. And they do recordings in this simple mode here but they're actually still recording at this lower bit rate for their videos and their higher productions. And that's because by default, it's set here to same as stream, that's the stream output. So it's copying these settings. Now this is useful if you want to test your stream output. So maybe doing live streams and you just want to see what the quality is like and test it offline, but it's not good for higher end productions. So if you click here, you'll notice that there's different file sizes here. So it's still simplified. It's not as deep, but the best thing to do and the mistake to avoid is just go up to the top here and change it to advanced. So in the advanced output settings here, you're going to have a lot more settings to dive into here for your encoding settings for streaming and also your recording output settings, which is really important where you can customize this and up the bit rate here. See, I've got this one set to 5,000 minimum there. You can go up to 10,000. You can do a lot higher here. You can change the type of the rate control. So CBR is just constant bit rate. You can go lossless. You have a lot more customization here to get your videos a higher recording quality. So once you switch your settings to advanced, you want to do this to optimize your settings. So for streaming here, once you've got advanced, you've got streaming settings and you've got audio tracks. You see you've got one, two, three, four, five to six. So basically that's audio channels. You can record up to six audio tracks for a live stream or a video. It's referring to the audio channels that you have. At the moment, I only have one audio channel within OBS. So if we take a look here, I click this little gear icon and this is where you find the setting where you can customize the tracks here. So at the moment, this mic is recording to all six tracks and I can untick them if I want to record just to one track, put one and two tracks. This is good for splitting up your audio if you want to separate the background music from your audio or your gameplay and stuff like that. So I've just added a second audio channel here. As you can see, this application audio and our mic audio. So we've got two channels. Now we can see when I open it up, I have another audio source here. So what I could have is I could have my mic audio and this could be audio from my desktop or my gameplay or whatever other audio source that I want. I could have both record to track one. I could have the mic to track two and then untick the others. So we have the gameplay or desktop audio or music recording to track three and then untick the other ones. So basically both will be on one track. So you have three tracks here. So both recording to one together, track two, just the mic audio, and then track three, just this background audio or gameplay audio or music audio, whatever it is. And in your streaming settings here, you can also change which one you're recording to if you had it set up for a different reason. By default, it's at track one. So I would just leave it at that. So that's, I usually leave that as a track one that has everything. And then I split them up beyond that if I have multiple tracks for other recordings. Below that, we have our encoder settings, which is AAC, which the streaming platforms like to use like YouTube and Twitch. Next is video encoding. 
and now you have this option available to use to change. There's a couple of different options and the Nvidia option here is better if you have a graphics card that supports it. But if you don't, there's the other option that you can choose here, which uses your CPU instead of your graphics card. And it's the X264 option. So depending on your system, if you do have an Nvidia graphics card that supports it, use that, it's better. Still in our streaming settings, we have some settings that are optimized for the platforms that we want to stream to. So CBR is the one that you want to use. That's the most supported that they like to use. And depending on your internet speed, this bit rate here is going to be dependent on your internet speed and your uploads and what you're recording in. So to give you a reason why I have mine set to 5000, and this is how you can adapt it to your system. So this is on the streaming settings. So I'm going off what the streaming recommendations is for Twitch. The first thing you want to check is what are you recording in as resolution and your frame rate. To find that, you want to go over to your video here and see what you're outputting as your final video and frames. So here I have 1920 by 1080 and the common frame rate I'm using is 30 FPS. Now that can go up to 60 or other frame rates as well, but I like to use 30 for video recordings. It's just easier and it's better for the video. You don't really need 60 frames unless it's high action or gameplay. So with those settings in mind, the optimal bit rate that they recommend for streaming platforms like Twitch is 4,500. Mine is 5,000. Another thing you need to take into account is your upload speed. So run a speed test to see what your internet speed is and then see what the upload speed is. So for example, my upload speed when I ran the test was 41 Mbps. Now, as you can see, it's different from Kbps. So how do you find that number? Well, basically you just want to times it by 100, whatever your upload speed is, times it by 100. And then that will give you the number here for your bitrate. So for me, being 41 times by 100 equals 41,000. And we know with the streaming platforms, they want to have about 4,500 kbps. So if I've got 41,000 available, so a good safety net there is to use up about 50% to 70% of your upload speed. So you have a stable live stream. So if we did use up 50% of our upload speed just for streaming, that would leave us with 20,500 kbps that we could use. So obviously we don't need that much. That's way too much. So that's plenty here. 5,000 is going to be optimal for what our frame rate is, our resolution and what the streaming platforms want and our upload speed. So that's why I have 5,000 a little bit higher because I've got a bit more wiggle room with my uploads. So it's at 5,000 kbps. Also I have the keyframe interval set to two seconds. So two seconds is what the streaming platforms and video platforms like to have as well. Preset is set to good quality. Once again, check on the streaming platforms like Twitch and YouTube what they recommend for your resolution. This is only gonna work for my resolution and my setup. You really need to know what your equipment is outputting. Like if you have a 4K camera and it's set up to a 4K sequence, it's not gonna translate. So make sure you check number one at the start, what your camera gear and the video frame rate and resolution are first. But for this one here at 1920 by 1080p for 30 frames, good quality is great for the preset. The tuning high quality is good as well. The multi-pass mode two, two pass, water resolution is great. Also the profile set to high is good. Also we have these two settings here, which we can tick if your system is good, which I have a really good system here. This is just gonna give us better quality, but it's a bit more taxing on your computer. So if your computer does struggle a bit, you can leave these off, but these are gonna help with optimizing the encoding settings for when it's streaming. They do a little couple things there where it just optimizes the bit rate and how it uploads with the encoder there. So if you do have a better system, tick them. The GPU is at zero, which just means it's gonna pick the automatic graphics card that's on your system. And the max B frames, leave this at two if it's set at two, if it's not, change it to two. That's what the streaming platforms and the video platforms want. So make sure it's at two. Now we also have the recording tab available here. So you wanna set your recording tab here. So recording settings and you have a recording path. Now this is on your directory where you wanna save your videos. So set this up wherever you wanna save your recordings to. This is where they're gonna to save to after you hit record on your system you'll be able to access them. So pick a file path that you're gonna remember, like maybe OBS Studio Recordings. That's what I like to use and save it to a drive that has plenty of space. So we've got recording format here next. So choose which one you prefer for your recording format. So I have mine set to MKV, but I'll also like to use the MP4 or QuickTime, the 
is a good option as well. We can see once we change it to MP4 or the QuickTime, it gives us this warning here. It's just saying that basically, if you have a recording and the power goes out or if it crashes, you're gonna lose everything and it won't save anything that you've had up to that recording, which has happened to me a few times where you might have a long recording, maybe for an hour, and then the power might go out, your system might break, and you'll actually lose the whole entire recording if it's in one of those formats. If you wanna be more safer, you can change it to MKV, which I like to do, and that's just gonna record it to a different format that you're gonna to have to do an extra step there to remux the recording. So basically you have to do another step after you've hit record and finished the recording, you have to remux the recording here. There's a setting I recommend if you're gonna do that, just go to the advanced settings here on the tab and under your recordings here, you're gonna see an option here where it says automatically remux to MP4. So if you tick that, you're gonna have two options once you've finished your recording, you're gonna have the MKV file, which isn't really compatible with a lot of things like Premiere Pro or editing software. You're gonna have to convert it to an MP4 or a different file format. And you're also gonna get alongside that same video, so that protected file, so if anything goes wrong, you still got it. But you're gonna get the MP4 here. So automatically remuxing it is gonna do it for you so you don't have to go through the process of remuxing it. To remux a recording manually, you have to go up to file and then go remux recordings. And then you have to go to this window here and then you have to click these little dots and go to the file directory of your recording and then hit remux. And then that's going to do the same thing and convert that to an mp4 file we also have the video encoding settings for the recording so for your video recordings here and there's a couple options as well if like i said if you have an nvidia graphics card definitely leave it on the h264 nvidia one but if you don't have that you can choose the x264 option as well another handy tip as well you'll see here that says use stream encoder so this is good if you want to test what your recordings may be Say if you're doing a live stream and you want to do a recording and match those settings and see what it looks like just in a recording without going live this use stream encoder is going to match what our streaming settings are so it's going to be at the 5000 bit rate there that we're going to see so our video recording won't be using these encoding settings it'll be recording at the 5000 kbps so it's a great way to reference your streams before you go live audio encoding settings you want to have that to aac then we have audio tracks as well one to six to tick if you want to use those different ones you can select multiple ones or just have one track then we've got the encoding settings and you want to set this to cbr so that means constant bit rate and this is the bit rate below it here so for my settings on for 1920 by 1080 p 30 frames and for the youtube recommendations they like to have about 8,000 to 10,000. So I record at 10,000 here. So the higher you go, the bigger the storage you'll need for that video file, but the better quality that it maintains with the bit rate. So 10,000 there. Now you adjust this to whatever the recommendations are for YouTube. So if you're recording at 720p, you'll go lower. Keyframe interval here, I just leave it at zero, which just means automatic. Because it's a video recording, I just leave it at automatic. It's not for live streaming. Preset, same, good quality. Tuning, same as well, high quality. Then we have the two-pass mode as well for multi-pass mode and then the profile set to high. And once again, if, depending on your system, you can have these both ticked if you wanna have a better recording for your encoding settings for your system. And GPU, zero, just automatic there, whatever your GPU is. And V-frames, same as the streaming one, you wanna set that to two. And we also have this setting to us available now, which is the audio tab. And this is the audio bit rate that we can select for each of those track channels that we saw before, up to six that we have. So each one, so our first track here, which is gonna be our mic that we have, you can see you can lower the bit rate, which is gonna lower the quality. So it might be 160 by default. If you're live streaming, that's what you need to have for all the live streaming platforms. They want 160. So you could have that as track one for 160 if you set up track one for live streaming. And if you're doing recording at the same time and you wanted to have that higher quality audio, you can set up the other tracks here at 320 to get that higher quality audio for your videos on YouTube. So we have the audio tab here and sample rate. You're gonna have 48 or 41. Now, depending, you have to check on your system, on your audio interface, what it's set. If your audio interface is only using 44.1, you'd wanna change it to that. But 48 should be pretty safe there for most systems. Channels, just leave it at stereo. And we've got global settings here, and this is where we set our microphones up. So global audio settings, this is where we can set a mic for all of our mixer. So it goes across all of our scenes. 
So here I've just got a microphone set to the mic auxiliary and we can add extra microphones if we want to, if we want to add multiple different microphones. You can see here, if I disable it, it will disappear from the mixer. So when I re-add it once again, it comes back to the mixer across all of our scenes. That's where we add our microphone. We have the meters here and that's just those green bars that, that pop up from the audio. So you can leave it to fast, simple peak. Now leave it on that. If you're having trouble trying to set those audio filters that we talk about in the other part in the series here, you can set it to true peak for that time. So I'd recommend setting it to true peak, setting your parameters on your compressors or your noise gates, and then changing it back to simple peak after you've got a good sounding setup with your audio filters. Next part of the series is going to be talking about audio filters and how to set them up and what order you should use them in. So that's in part three. So click the end card video at the end to see that one.